What's up everyone? In this video, we learn how to get access tokens for the Instagram Graph API. Click the link, continue. We have our access token and here we have the expiration. It expires in exactly 60 days. In order to use the Instagram Graph API, your Instagram account must be set to a creator account or a business account. So if your Instagram account is currently set to personal, I've created a few videos on how to switch it from a personal to a creator or a business account. Once you have a business account or a creator account, you can then use that account with the Instagram Graph API. The Instagram Graph API allows us to have full control over all of our social media interactions. We can check out the metrics on our Instagram account. We can publish content, moderate comments, search hashtags, access to Instagram Insights, which is like Google Analytics for our Instagram account. We can search for any content that we've been mentioned in, and we can set up webhooks, which allows us to get real-time notifications from Instagram anytime somebody interacts with our account. And to access all of these endpoints through the Instagram Graph API, we need an access token. The access token is our key to managing all of our social media interactions. Before we can start coding, the first thing we need to do is create ourselves a Facebook app. We're going to head over to developers.facebook.com, click on My Apps, and click the Create App button. We're going to fill us in with the app name, put in a contact email, and hit Create App ID. Verify that you are not a robot, and click Submit. The page will reload and our app has been created. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Settings and go to Basic. Here we have our app ID and our app secret, which we will use later in our code to get the access token. I'm going to upload a app icon just for fun. There it is. And I'm going to save those changes. Click on the products on the left side, find Facebook login and click setup. Facebook login will appear over here on the left side under products. Click the settings tab under Facebook login. Everything here can stay the same except for we have to enter a valid OAuth redirect URI. I'm going to put a the URL to my obtain access token.php file on my site. This is the URI that Facebook will redirect the user back to after they have logged in with your app. Save those changes and we are done with the app setup. In order to use the Facebook login, Facebook has a Facebook Graph SDK. GitHub.com slash Facebook slash PHP Graph SDK. You can manually download this clone it, or you can use Composer, which I will be doing. This is the command we need, Composer require Facebook slash Graph SDK. So open up your command line, CD into our Instagram Graph API folder. Run the Composer require Facebook slash Graph SDK command. Let Composer do its thing, and by the time you minimize your command line, we see the vendor folder here has been created which contains all of the files we need to code against the Graph SDK with PHP. Back to our root folder, Instagram Graph API, we're going to create a defines file. In the defines file, we're going to save our app secret, our app ID, and our redirect URI. We are also going to do a session start because the Graph SDK will be using the PHP native session. Back to our app, under Settings, Basic, and we're going to copy our app ID right here, our app secret right here. Then you're going to click on the Facebook login settings and copy the redirect URI and place it right here. Save that, and the defines file has been completed. Back in our root folder, we're going to create our obtain access token.php file. First things first is to include our defines file. Next thing we need to do is include the autoloader for the Facebook Graph SDK. The autoloader can be found right here in the vendor folder. Now we have access and can use the files from the Graph SDK. Next we're going to create a credentials array that we can pass to Facebook to authenticate with the Graph SDK. Once we have those creds set up, we can 
create our Facebook object. So we have instantiated our Facebook Graph API object with our credentials. Next, we need a helper object. This will get the login URL for the user to hit so they can authenticate with our app. And the last thing for initialization is OAuth. We will use this later to get the long-lived access token. So we have done our basic initialization for the page. We have included our defines, required and loaded the graph SDK, set up a credentials array here with our app ID, app secret, secret, spell that right, or that will error out, graph version, telling it to use the session, we have our Facebook object. We have set up our helper here so we are able to get a login URL for the user. And we have our OAuth object as well, which we will use to get an access token later. When the user first gets to our page, if they don't have an access token, they will not be logged in. So we want to display a login URL so they can authenticate with our app. If the user has authorized our app, Facebook will redirect the user to uh, the redirect URI we set in our defines file, and it will append on a code variable. So what we're going to do is check for a code variable in the URL. If it exists, use that code to get an access token. If there is no code in the URL, we will display them the login with Facebook link. We're first going to code the display login URL. We're going to define some permissions which are required to access the Instagram Graph API. And in this array, we are going to request the user's public profile, Instagram basic, and pages show list. These are required in order to generate an access token so we can use the Instagram Graph API. Then we're going to get our login URL. To do this, we're going to use our helper right up here. We're going to call the get login URL function. The first parameter is the redirect URI. This has to match the redirect URI from our app dashboard. And along with that redirect URI, we pass those permissions. Now that we have a login URL, we can display it out on the page for the user to see. And that's all it takes to get a login URL and display it to the user. When they click on this, they will be taken to Facebook and they will see a pop-up for our app requesting the permissions. They will click Authenticate and they will be sent back to this page with a code in the URL. Then they will fall into the if right here, where we will get an access token. So if we hit our page in the browser, we have ourselves a login with a Facebook display link that the user can click on. Let's inspect that. This was the link generated by Facebook Graph SDK. You see it placed in our graph version there, our client ID, redirect URI. Redirect URI should not be the constant. <laughs> did we name it wrong? Oh, yeah, we did. It's just Facebook redirect URI in our defines file. You see the scope here is what we defined in our permissions. Save this one more time. Refresh our page. And now we see our redirect URI is there. Let's click on the login with Facebook link. This will direct us to Facebook where we will see a pop up for the app we created. Our app is asking for permission to receive the name and profile picture. Click continue. The next part is asking us about Instagram. What Instagram business accounts do you want to use with this app? Here is my Instagram account right here that I have set to a professional business account. I'm gonna select that and click next. Now we get to decide what pages we want to associate ourselves with. I'm going to use my page down here, which I am the admin of. Click next. So we're going to give access to the profile and post from the Instagram account connected to our page and show a list of pages I manage and click done. If all goes well, the app should now be linked to Facebook. Click OK. Facebook will redirect us back to our redirect URI and they append on a code. Here is the code we will use to get our access tokens. Back to our obtain underscore access underscore token dot PHP file. When we do have a code from Facebook, the first thing we want to do is try and get a short lived access token. And to do this, we are going to use our helper class. In the helper class, there is a get access token function. 
if for whatever reason it fails, we're going to write a few catch statements here. Once our chat catch is set up, we're going to simply echo out the access token. We're going to hit our obtain access token.php file again and click on our login link. Again, we will be taken to Facebook. This time it'll say that we have already linked it. So all we have to do is click continue and it should take us back to our page. You see the code up here was used to get ourselves a short-lived access token. Once we have our short-lived access token, we can exchange it for a long-lived access token. We're going to write an if statement right here calling the isLongLived function on our short-lived access token. If it is not long-lived, then we want to exchange it for a long-lived access token. We're going to do a try catch here. In our try, we're going to update our access token. In this case, we are going to use our OAuth object. On our OAuth object, we call the function get long -lived access token, and in we pass our short-lived access token. If something goes wrong, we want to dump that error out so we know exactly what failed. So after we try to get a long-lived access token, we want to echo that out. We're going to set our access token here. And we don't need to display the short one anymore. We get ourselves an access token. If it's not a long-lived access token, we try to exchange it for a long-lived access token. We then set our access token, and we display it out on the page. Head back to our obtaining access token file. Click login. Continue. And we now get a long-lived access token. We can also var dump it out to see when it expires. So right before we cast it to a string, let's var dump out the access token object. Remove the code out of the URL one more time, click the link, continue, and we have our object var dumped out on the page. We have our access token, and here we have the expiration. So we can see it expires in exactly 60 days. And that is how we get access tokens for use with the Instagram Graph API. Now we can go ahead and use this access token to do all of the things. That's going to wrap up this video, guys. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you guys want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.